Hello and welcome back. So last time we made a program that writes some text on on when we run the game. Currently it says Godot is cool. We can change that to the script. You all know how we how to do that. We did it last lecture. And now we're going to start developing our game, Pong. So this is our viewport. This is where the game will be taking place. It's Pong, so it only has one scene. It's going to have two two players, one one pedal on the left side, one on the right side, a ball in the middle that will start moving and then it will bounce off of the pedals and if, if it leaves either to left or right the other player will get a score. So in this lecture we will, be, we will set up our project, project. Here we have our resources. We can change the view to be listed as this or as icons. I'll just keep it at this. Now the folks at Godot were kind enough to provide us with some resources for this pro project. So we have a ball, the left and the right palette, and the separator. Now if we just import our th this folder, you will have this in the in as resources. You will be able to download this. So my project is currently on the desktop, and if I just cop move this folder to to this project to this folder and go back to Godot. Now we have here under resources the folder that is called Godot resources. Now if I click on it and I enable this you will see that we have all of our assets here. We have the ball, the left palette, the right palette and the separator. Very easy. Okay so let's now go ahead and delete this rich text label because we don't need this node. And I'm also going to Mm, let's un let's untouch the script yet. Let's just set up the the game. So we need another a new child node. So let's go ahead and add a new child node to the world node. And this node is going to be a sprite. So let's go ahead and type in sprite. We want a sprite two D, not a three D sprite. So this one, we you can see we have a nice little smiley face that tells us that this is in fact a sprite. We also have an anim animated sprite, but we don't really need this. For now, this game will only need sprites. So let's go ahead and create that. We can then name this left play, left player. And now the sprite needs a texture. And we can just go ahead and drag the left palette into, into this. Now this is pretty small. And we can, of course, increase the scale of this. Let's see, that's too big, two maybe. Mm, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with the size, let's see, three. There we go, that should be enough. Don't worry about the position for now, we'll just place them in the game and then later we'll make sure that the positions are properly set up. And now let's go ahead and duplicate this node and this is going to be the right player and let's move him as well if you're wondering how am I, how I am moving these I just select the node and then press W to move move it around you can move it on the Y or the X I just put this here and of course we need to change the texture to be the right palette or you can use if you want they can be the same color if you like it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Let's again duplicate this and put it here. I will call this ball. Of course, add our ball. Now, there we go. Okay. And we, we need a separator. Let's duplicate this. Call it separator. There we go. Now this separator is pretty big, so let's just make sure that the scale is... There we go. Actually, let's set it to 2-2. Two, two. And that should be good enough. So now if I start the game, let's see how this looks. Oh, uh, we have a problem in our script because we removed the rich text label node. Okay, let's just... This is how our game looks like. 
mm, we'll we will decrease the size of these elements and the resolution of the game so it will look better but let's just now uh, remove the get node rich text label we don't need this okay so that will be it for this lecture now that everything is ready our all our assets are ready and set in place we can continue with the actual development and the coding so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next lecture hello and welcome back everyone in this lecture we're going to create movement for our pads and we'll continue we'll we will change a few things so you know that we imp imported these assets and we changed the size of these nodes and these sprites but there was really no reason to do that because these sprites were actually made to be developed in a different resolution so if i open up project settings and go to general under display here we we have our width and the height of our project so basically our resolution and this these assets were developed with this resolution in mind 640 and 400 so let's change that and now you'll see that our viewport has changed and if we reset the size of our sprites they will fit perfectly okay so let's that's that let's see full screen now resizable yeah we want it to be resizable Oops. whoops there we go okay let's just close this now you can see that the viewport is much smaller and that our left the right player is actually outside of the game so let's now select our left player and i'm just going to set the scale back to one one there we go get the right player set it to one one as well set the ball to one one and set the separator to be one one as well now we need to figure out which position we want to set our players at so the separator should be in the middle and if the width of our scene is six, 640 pixels that means that this should be on the position x let me just position x of two 220 actually 320 there we go and on the y let's see oops not zero um, 200 there we go now it's perfectly centered let's go ahead and do the same for the ball so 320 and 200 there we go now the ball the ball is in the center as well left player let's set his its position to be 200 as well whoops not 2000 but 200 and the right player we want its position to be 200 as well on the y and on the x uh, let's make it 600 there we go and for the left player let's make it 40 oops Forty. there we go so now if I was to run the game you can see we have a small resolution and everything is lined up perfectly okay now that, we, that we've done that actually let's go ahead and do another thing go to the project settings general go to display and actually render here we have the default clear color this is basically the background color of our whoops I moved the player the background color of our project when we run the game I'm just going to set it to black you can of course set this to be any color but if I set this to black okay now close this and run the game you'll see now that it's pitch black even though in the engine it is a different color okay now this looks very good let's continue with our programming so we want to make the movement of one of our players and I'm going to go ahead and make the right one move so back in our script first up we'll need a constant variable constants are created like this constant and usually when making constant variables we will name them in all, in all caps so it's going to be player speed 
and this can be let's set it to 100 this is in pixels so this is referring to 100 pixels constant variables are variables that which value will not be changed throughout the entire game so the player speed will always stay the same nothing in the game will make us move faster or slower now in, our, in the process function we actually want to do some code this is going to be running each frame and this is where we're going to check if the player is pressing a button if it is we want to move him so first up i'm going to create a variable which i will call right player position and in this variable i will store the position of the right player the current position of the right player this will be equal to get node so we need to get the right player node so this basically gets this node here in the world tree and then we want to get the position of that node okay so basically now in this when each frame the value of this variable will be equal to the position of this node so when we start the game it's going to be 600 on the x and 200 on the y okay moving along let me just close the output so you can see more of the code now we want to check if we're pressing a button so if and we say input action is action pressed and here we have a few of these already recommended actions what these are these are basically found here in the under scene project settings input map here you have all of your inputs and you can see this one is called ui accept and the buttons that it is referring to are return enter space and device zero button zero on the xbox a nintendo b ps cross so you can add you can add your own actions here we'll do that later but for now we will only be using ui up and ui down so basically user interface up refers to the up key on the keyboard and ui down refers to the down key also d-pad up d-pad down on game pads so let's go ahead and say ui up oops up so if this action is pressed and now we have to add this symbol here we say enter so if this is pressed what we want to do is write player position dot y so the y position we're only moving on the y position it's going to be equal to plus equals minus player minus player speed times delta now delta is this here and it's a very small number it's the l number b between each frame it just makes the game run much smoother okay and under if input now we need to check if we are pressing the down key so ui down and if so the right player position dot y is going to be equal to plus equals player speed times delta now you might be thinking oops I'm, I'm missing a bracket here sorry and here as well now you might be thinking why didn't we simply say minus equal player speed well that's because in Godot you can't really do that we have to say plus equal and then minus speed and also if we're pressing up why is this a negative value it's going to be isn't in Godot um, negative on the y is actually up not down so don't let that confuse you now if we run this and if I hold the up key, oops we forgot to actually okay so now what we did is if we're pressing up this value here the right player position is being either uh, increased or decreased but we never actually changed the position of the node so let's go ahead and do that move out of the if statement and go ahead and say get node and the node that we want to get is the right player and now we want to set the position of this node to be equal to right player position there we go now if we run this if i hold up 
my pad is moving up, up if I hold down it is moving down. The speed might be a little slow, you can always change that by just going in here and changing this value to maybe 200. And then again we can hit play. Okay, now it's much faster. You can of course pick the the speed that you like, this is 200 pixels each frame. But we have a problem, our player can actually leave the screen. We don't want that, that's not something you can do in Pong and that's not something you should be doing in Pong. So we'll fix that in the future video. But in the next one we'll also make the movement of our player and we'll make sure that they can't leave the screen. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture. Hello and welcome back. So last time we made the movement of the right player and now in this lecture we're going to go ahead and create the movement for the left player. Now it's very similar to this the mef this method that we did actually it's pretty much the same so let's go ahead and go ahead and create a new variable called left player position and we now need to get the node of the left player of course and then we need to get the position of that player now that we have the position of our player we need now to check for the input of that player Let's go ahead and click on scene, go to project settings and go to the input map. Let's now create a new action. I will call this, let's call it left up and now click add. And here we have, it's, it's here on the bottom of the page. Now if I click this plus sign here, I can add a new key, draw a button, draw axis or mouse button. In my case, I want to add a key. The key now, it now it asks for a key press is going to be W I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to add a new action, which is going to be left down. Let's add it. And now add a new key here. It's going to be S. So W for moving up, S for moving down, standard gaming stuff. OK, let's now create two new if statements. So if the input dot is action pressed is equal to left up the left player position dot y is going to be equal to plus equal to minus player speed times delta okay then if the input that is action pressed left down the left player position dot y is equal is plus equal to player speed times delta there we go and finally we need to get the node and assign the, our current position the position that we have calculated with this code so let's go ahead and get node left player and let's set the position of that player to be left player player, player position there we go let's now make this a little bit more previewable so let's add a hashtag and hashtags are used to add comments and here I'll type in update the position of our players there we go so now we know that this here updates the position of our players and here I'll just say check for check input and move the pads we actually don't move, move them here, we just calculate the position where they should be, but yeah, sure, we can call it like that. And, um, variables for player positions. And up here we can call this constant variables, constants. Okay. So that'll be it for this lecture. Now let's start, run the game and show you that it works. Now if I press WS, you can see I'm moving both players at the same speed simultaneously. So the game is going along pretty well. You can have a friend over and play it. Well, there's nothing to play now. But in the next lectures, we'll go ahead and make sure that the ball moves and that it can bounce off the players and that the players can't leave the screen. So thank you for watching. That's been it for this quick lecture. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.